We continue our journey through the dungeon of fear and hunger, looking for the guard. Last time we took the mines to descend to level 7. Instead of going through the mines this time, like an idiot casual, let's instead enter the book passage. You'll find yourself in a strange courtyard. An almost surreal melancholy overcomes you. This is the first area you've been in since you got here, where you actually feel an odd sense of safety. At the end of the path, we find a statue of a man. His arms are spread wide, and a wound in his side appears to be bleeding. Very Christ-like imagery. This is a statue of Ulmer, though that's not important right now. If you aren't playing as Ragnvolder, here you'll meet him for the first time and have this interaction. I see. Seems like you still retain your sanity. In a way, it's reassuring to see that I'm not completely alone here. Tell me, are you evil? Uh, no? Hmm. Only time will tell. You'd be surprised what you're truly capable of once you stay long enough here. But your presence here just means these dungeons will claim one more victim, and the evil residing here will grow that much stronger. If I were you, I'd try to escape these ancient walls by any means necessary. For your sake, I hope our paths don't cross again. Stay cautious in the dungeons. The evil in this place is of a pure kind. It's not here just to torment us. It's not here to spread its roots into the surrounding world, even if the dungeon's vile traps and decrepit monsters would lead you to believe otherwise. Its interests are already past this world, and this place is a mere relic from its long history. You seem familiar with this evil. Yah, yes, my kind, the northern people of Aldergaard. We found the dark continents of Vinland from the far reaches of the west. The moment you lay your eyes on the crooked mountains and the twisted forests of those lands, you feel the presence of a greater evil. It's that same evil that resides here. Who are you? You can call me Ragnvaldir. I'm from the north, from the kingdom of Aldergaard. Maybe it's safer together. No doubt it would be for you, but for the time being I won't be travelling with you. Why are you here? I'm here to find a relic that a certain person took from my people. This man is imprisoned somewhere down below. Breaking from his archetype, he's actually one of the more knowledgeable and nicer characters in the game's narrative. Moving on, you'll see this guy attempting to become a butterfly. You do you, man. It's a free country. Unless you're the guard, obviously. On the left, you'll find a bunch of people engaging in an orgy, like the wolf masks. But don't worry, everyone here is fucking not eating. So you know, it's probably not as bad. These are the bunny masks, and they'll ask you to join. I will. Doing so will restore your mind. However, similar to the wolf masks, you can only do it once. Doing it again will prompt a coin toss, that if you fail will mean your character is locked in the cycle of doing this forever, effectively ending your run. These are the other guards who survived the events of the dungeon's collapse, except they find themselves engaged in Cloitus as a tribute to Sylvan, the old god of being too clingy. She is also not too important right now. Essentially, both groups are completely lost in their particular ecstasy, and doomed to continue fucking and eating respectively until they die, the American dream is still alive and well in fantasy Fritten. On the right, you'll find a collapsed hole. Planting an explosive vial will clear it, allowing you to go through where you'll find a tree that seems to have absorbed corpses, if not outright grown from one, and it's guarded by our old friends, the fucking dogs. If you have Dars and Ragnavolder in your party, you can talk to them, and Rags will tell Dars about the story of the Maiden of the Depths. This tree is, how do you say it, magnificent. It's the Maiden of the Depths, the human bride of the god that formed these dungeons. The two could never truly be together, with being a mere human and being an older god. But desperately, the Maiden still tries to link the human world with the world of the gods, to this day. Is this story real? Sounds... strangely romantic. 
<laughs> no. It's just an old folk's tale. Ah, uh, that's a shame. Maybe there's a seed of truth in it. I think Disney just found their next big film. Going through the strange tree, you'll enter the bowels of the beast. And before we do anything else, just listen to this sound design when you're traveling through the roots. At times, this game's sound design is borderline transcendent. The area's corridors are tight, and pit traps are all over the place, meaning that having quick wits and quick reactions when walking can be the difference between moving forward in your journey and being incredibly inconvenienced. Scattered throughout the area are the Mumblers, a creature that is local to the thicket and oddly resembles a giant phallic image. But it totally isn't, I promise. Please, Susan, don't attack me. They're an easy enemy to fight, except when they die, they ejaculate poison onto you. They aren't dicks. Creations of the Black. The darkness had its way with countless victims. They are fully erect, despite being left untouched for decades. For fuck's sake, thanks game. To progress through the thicket, you have to fall down the shafts. In the next level, you'll encounter the cursed Eastern Sword. The Eastern Sword is another powerful sword found in the game. You can pull the sword which will immediately trigger a fight with the Assassin Spectre. It will demand its sword returned, and you can immediately end the fight at any time by doing just that. Though you won't get another chance to get Eastern Steel, one of the most powerful weapons in the game. The Assassin himself is a bit of an enigma. Not too much is known about him. He travelled far from the East just to stop the spreading of the inevitable darkness. His iron will manifests in his blade even to this day. The area where we find the sword is the only place in the thicket free from the corruption of the God of the Depths. Interestingly, this is the second warrior we find who came here in their time to battle the darkness, before ultimately falling to it. Characters like Ragnavoldir, who came here to fight the darkness too, should at this point be doubting if their own quests in this accursed place are even worth it. Speaking of which, we find Ol Ragzi again. If you exhausted all of his dialogue options in the courtyard, he'll be able to join your party. Oh, you again. You're still alive. Huh. I guess I misjudged you previously. This place is truly curious, isn't it? They say these are the intestines of the God of the Depths. That means we are inside an older god. The God of the Depths? Yeah. He is not that well known a god, as he is mostly worshipped by those who are forsaken and forgotten. His people often shy away from the light and prefer dark corners of the earth. Have you seen the cave dwellers yet? They prove my point quite well. The god of the depths is responsible for the layout of these dungeons. He is ever changing his shape to challenge the visitors. I'd try to please him if I were to delve deeper. Have you found what you're looking for? Nech. Not yet. There is a man in prison somewhere in these dungeons. The man has something that shouldn't belong to any human. I'm here to retrieve it. And perhaps get rid of the man while at it. He carries an ominous energy with him. I'm not sure what to think of him. Would you like to join my party? Hmm. Maybe I will, actually. There is clearly more to you than what I initially expected, so it'd be an honor to crawl these dungeons with you. But sometimes, if you're playing on a hard difficulty, you can find Rax having been taken over by some kind of parasitic flowers, forcing you to fight him. Moving further down, you find more of the flowers, and even the mumblers have been taken over by them. You'll also encounter the greater mumbler, a tougher version of the mumbler, but bigger on the health pool and bigger on the gains, creations of the black. Once a mumbler develops a consciousness, it can finally break free from the restraints of the god of the depths. Or is it more like consciousness or enlightenment? It's hard to tell. These creatures don't function in the same way as humans do. No longer tied to be just a mindless servant of the god. No one knows their true ambitions. On this level of the thicket, you'll find a strange, giant heart. Its rhythmic pacing and impossibility fills you with an unrelenting dread. And a stab it. You keep moving and keep falling until you find yourself at level 7, the area in which the guard is being held prisoner. Finally, we made it. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you about what Enki can do in the thicket. 
If you have mastery over insects, you can hear them whispering in the walls. Following it, we find ourselves passing through tight corridors and evading the singing mumblers. Following the directions of the insects' whisperings will lead you to a room where you'll find a throne and sat atop it a giant cockroach. Well, we've seen weirder things thus far. He'll give you a quest to kill the butterfly man. After this, if you aren't playing as Enki, he'll give you a quest to kill Enki as well. The cockroach king himself, itself, is a follower of the god of the depths, and its mission against the butterfly man and Enki seems to be politically motivated. The butterfly man is seeking the D-man's favor to finish his transformation, and the black priests are monotheists, worshipping every god. So Enki was also likely seeking that same favor. And based on his dialogue, Mr. Cockroach is the egotistical jealous type. Greetings. Greetings. It appears you understand us. But alas, you are not one of us. Not just yet, at least. Tell me, oh filthy human. Do you want to kneel in front of me? Your humility pleases me. I might just make you one with our kind. One day. Yes. But for now, you are a peasant. Say it. Say that you are my peasant. I am your peasant. Peasant. There is a lonely being on the upper levels. A wretched being who wishes to be like us. The being wants to soar the skies. But we cannot allow that. Not from someone as miserable as him. Murder that being. I want to see its blood flow. And I shall reward you. So you continue down until you fall to the seventh level and find yourself in the hallway of insects. Walking down it, you'll find another heart. Jabbity, jabbity, jab, jab, jab. When you finally find the dungeon proper, you feel a sense of relief. Thank God, normalcy. The dungeon, I'm saved. A terrifying presence has entered the room. Ah, fuck, it's the crow boy. The thicket was seemingly locked away on purpose. The mumblers and brain flowers are completely hostile and beyond the point of any reason, and the twisted tree itself is enough to disturb the dreams of any who gaze upon it. The thicket is the domain of, of the darkness. Our brief sojourn into it is a trespass against a kingdom we could never fully understand, and would frankly never want to. Although characters like the butterfly seems to suggest that falling under the god of the depths' influence is actually somewhat of a choice. It's something you can actually desire and achieve. Here we find ourselves at the end of our journey. Lagarde is within arm's reach. We can finally get what we came here for. But we can't ignore what we've seen so far. And even if we do save Lagarde, how could we leave before we discover the last of the dungeon secrets? and how the crow mauler, our tenacious stalker, relates to it all. Please join me next time when we talk about the god of the depths. <laughs>